Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm doing something a little bit different. So, I feel like I was inspired to do this from somebody's booktube channel, but I cannot for the life of me figure out who it was or what the video was. So if it was you, let me know in the comments and I'll pin the comment and uh, yeah, sorry about that. So today, what I am doing is I'm adding dragons to books. I almost said adding books to dragons, but that wouldn't work as well. Uh, <laughs> So, what would happen if you added a book to a dragon? You'd get a dragon book. Yes, yeah, so the idea here is I have ten books that I'm going to show to you and uh, we're going to talk about what it would be like if those books had dragons in. Because everything can be improved by a dragon. I see the fault in our stars is like on my floor over there. Not even for this video. That would be so much better with a dragon in it. That would be really good. That could be how they get to Amsterdam. They fly there on the dragon. Was that spoilers? I don't think those were spoilers. I didn't mention, like, Gus dying or anything like that. Oh, oh, that is a spoiler. Okay, book number one. Book number one, The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. So, obviously this is a, a dystopia, and, um, I mean, it's not a very happy book. And I, I must admit, the only way I can really think that dragons would be in this would be they'd be working as, like, part of the regime to keep the regime going, you know. So it would just make this dystopian novel even more dystopian, but with a nice little lick of fantasy as well. I mean, I can imagine, for example, when you have the scenes where, you know, traitors or whatever are, are executed, instead of them being hung, or hanged, sorry, it should be hanged, instead of them being hanged, uh, they, they would be put to death by dragon. You know, and I mean here, for example, this, the, the, <laughs> I don't even know what I'm talking about at this point. <laughs> but you know, where you've got characters like Ovred, you could have, uh, Ovred, sorry. <laughs> Number two, Agatha Christie, Miss Marple's Final Cases. And again, speaking of Smaug, it's particularly, I want to see Miss Marple and like a wily old dragon, you know, a 2,000 year old dragon have like a battle of wits where like you know the dragon is there and, and he's like I'm gonna eat you Miss Marple unless you can solve my riddles and she'll be like come on bring it on and, and as well if she did come across a dragon it could very well be her final case I mean yeah now I'm thinking about a dragon eating Miss Marple and it's just really sad What's going on inside my head? All right, number three, we have Dr. No by Ian Fleming. This is my weird old uh, hardback edition of it from The Book Club. Ah, there we go, Pre copyright 1958. I, I don't know if you've ever read Dr. No or seen the movie of it, but basically <laughs> a big part of the story hinges upon the fact that the island that Dr. No is on, that's where the uh, roseate spoonbill is, and they basically are a type of bird that produce this high quality guano bird poo. But I think it's also really good for like fertilizer and stuff. Guano is quite, quite pricey. So I'm just thinking, imagine that if instead of Dr. No's Island having the roseate spoonbill, if it had dragons on it, and that was where the guano was coming from. Plus, actually, there is the scene in this as well. My voice just broke because I got so excited. There is the scene in this where he has a mechanical dragon. So it's not too much of a stretch to think that maybe he actually has a real dragon. And that's what's making the guano. All right. Number four. This is a non-fiction book. This is Who Killed Kurt Cobain by Ian Hal Perrin and Max Wallace. And the reason I picked this up is because wouldn't it be great <laughs> if you read through this entire book and the conclusion of it was, yeah, it was a dragon. He was killed by a dragon. Well, he, a lot of people will say Courtney Love, and you could argue that Courtney Love is a dragon. I don't know. I like Courtney Love. I like Hole, her band. It was a good band. I'm one of those uh, rare people who was a big Kurt Cobain fan who think he, he killed himself. I don't think he was murdered. Uh, I think maybe somebody went along and cleaned up the crime scene afterwards. So perhaps it was a dragon that went in and did that. The mysterious death of an icon. It's not mysterious, he was killed by a dragon. Book number five, Our Doris by Charles Heathcote. So Charles Heathcote is an indie author. He's actually here on uh, Booktube, so check out his channel. But um, this is basically a bit like keeping up appearances. It's kind of, uh, it's like a comedy about old people basically and so the plot of this novel is that Doris Copeland is uh, she wants to win the neighborhood uh, garden safari 
and I just think I was I was going through all of my books and I was like, what is the book where it would be the most incongruous to have a dragon in it? And and this is what I came up with. I can't imagine why there would be a dragon in like Macclesfield or where or wherever it's set set in the north of England in like a suburban street. So I don't know why a dragon would be there. But I do think it would be great if a dragon was in there. And like I can imagine Doris marching up to this dragon and like bopping it on the nose and be like, Oi, dragon! You're ruining my grass and it's the garden safari in two days. Oi, Harold! Harold, there's a dragon in the garden, Harold! Oh, I'm coming, oh, Doris. What do you mean there's a dragon? Blooming hell, there is a dragon! <laughs> Charlie, please write this scene for me. Number six, Stephen King, Firestarter. So this is basically about a little girl who has the power to start fires. And I think at the end, how good would, like, the final scene at the end be? If it was, if it was a little, what was her name, Char Charlie? Yeah, Charlie. A little girl with pigtails. <laughs> Standing off against again like a Hungarian Ridgeback or whatever that whatever they're called. I'm bad at Harry Potter dragons. I'm sorry Imagine that imagine having a little child and a dragon in the, this is making me sound really slithering again Because I want to I want a child to fight a dragon basically But I, I just would be intrigued to see who would win and obviously Charlie has the power of fire So it would be it would be a fairly even matchup I think I think if anything, my money would be on Charlie, because if she can manipulate fire, surely she can wait till the dragon breathes fire, and then just make it kind of all go back inside the dragon and blow it up. Number seven, we've got another non-fiction book. This is Mr. Nice by Howard Marks, and basically Howard Marks was a weed smuggler. He, he, that's how he made his fortune. He, he's just spent seven years in America's toughest penitentiary. You'll like him. Imagine if that was what he was smuggling his drugs with. If he was smuggling them with dragons, he probably wouldn't have spent seven years in America's toughest penitentiary, would he? Because the dragons would have come to, to bust him out there. Plus, as well, bearing in mind he's a dope guy, if he's got dragons around, always got a lighter on hand as well. And he's Welsh. And Welsh dragons. Okay, number eight. Bram Stoker, Dracula. Now, I mean, I love Dracula. I'm not saying it's a bad book. I'm not saying any of these are bad books without dragons. I just think they could be further improved with the addition of a dragon. And Dracula is definitely one where it would be... Imagine if Dracula had dragons. I think he might have won at that point. I mean, they wouldn't have been able to chase down Dracula if Dracula had a dragon. Like, I mean, spoiler alert for Game of Thrones here, but for example, now that the Night King has got a dragon... You've got to fancy his chances a little bit more than than pre-Dragon Night King. And it's the same with uh, Dracula. Number nine, another non-fiction book. It's surprising how many non-fiction books could be a lot better with dragons in. So here we have Sun Tzu, The Art of War. And because, you know, there's a lot of wisdom here. You know, it's supposed to, people use it in their day-to-day -day life, in the boardroom and that kind of stuff. But for, oh, let me read this part. For instance, in southern China, there is a large animal, a kind of reptile, which is the same size as a large house. It is much stronger in strength than a tiger, and it often attacks a tiger when it sees one. It is as nimble as a squirrel and usually lays in ambush in a tree, and suddenly jumps onto the back of the tiger, gets hold of the tiger's tail, and uses its sharp paw to vigorously scratch the tiger's anus. I flicked in at random there and tried to adapt it to be about dragons, but it got a little bit weird. I want to know how to fight in a war when the other side has a dragon. It'd actually come in quite useful if you were writing fantasy. Alright, and the final book here. Train Spotting by Irvin Welsh. And the reason I think, well, dude, there's so many things I haven't thought through. Like, I just selected some books and I'm like, oh, that would be a good one to talk about. But they're all doing heroin in this. They're chasing the dragon. That's what they're doing. They're already doing that. And they never they never actually arrive and catch a real dragon. They just get high on heroin quite a lot. Uh, but wouldn't it be great to see a bunch of junkies try and fight a dragon? I, I mean, that's probably really insensitive of me. But it would... I mean, it'd be a laugh. For about two minutes. I don't think they'd last very long. Or... Flipping it around the other way around, imagine a dragon that was a heroin junkie. Imagine a dragon going through withdrawal. That would be awful. Jesus. Has somebody really said that train spotting deserves to sell more copies than the Bible? 
They also called it the best book ever written by man or woman. I mean, it's a good book. I don't, I don't know if I'd go that far. <laughs> All right. Well, this was a weird video. People are probably watching this being like, wow, Dane's losing, losing his mind a little bit here. I, I just thought this would be a fun video. And actually, I do encourage, if you're watching, to take this idea and run with it. Let me see your uh, videos with dragons in them. Todd, Todd the Librarian, you could do a good one. I imagine who else would do a good one? Uh, Kath, Kath Elizabeth Reads. I can imagine that. I don't know, it works with any genre, as we've seen. It works with both fiction and non-fiction. I should have got some poetry, really. But uh, yeah, my camera's running out of battery, and I've rambled on for far too long about dragons. So, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments whether you thought this video even worked. If you did and you did enjoy it, I could probably do 10 more. I have plenty of books to pick from, I guess. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. And dragons, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.